Greetings, greetings. Welcome everyone to Hearts and Heels. I am your host, Shay Robinson. Thank you for tuning in this Thursday. Remember, you can always connect with us at Hearts and Heels, the number one on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all those great spaces. Connect. We want to know who's listening. We want to know what you have to say. We want to get your feedback. You know, we're always here every Thursday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, the place where we talk about everything from your heart to your heels. I'm super excited about tonight. We do have a special guest on, but before he gets here, here. I do want to share this. Did you know that April is National Black Women's History Month? I had no earthly idea until I was doing some research and I wanted to, you know, bring some things to like I've been talking about, different things that's happening across the world every month. But this month, I want to bring light to it is official that April is National Black Women's History Month. And I thought it was befitting to share that as today we want to give a congratulations to Katanji Brown Jackson as she is the first Black female Supreme Court justice. She was confirmed today uh, with the 53-47 vote by, by our BP, Kamala Harris. So shout out to her in the work that she's doing. I do want to share something with you. I thought it was so cool because everybody, of course, is giving their thanks and congratulations. Uh, but a young lady, she wrote this, and I want to share this with you. It says, Kantanji of House Brown Jackson, first of her name, majestic, melanated magistrate, brilliant barista of the bench, great guardian of the gavel, lock rocking liege of law, noble Nubian negotiator, capable countess of courts. Omnicompetent officer of order, exemplar of earnest equity, advocate of affecting action, presiding priestess of the poised platform, quintessential qualified queen, the first black woman to ever serve on the Supreme Court of the United States is here. Any black woman who has smashed through glass ceilings might smile at the top but she's probably nursing the wounds of the shards of the glass that remain in her skin. The thousand paper cuts of microaggressions, the overproving our worth to people who underperform their humanity, the countless times we've been overlooked, undervalued, and overpunished. But this is her story. Our SCOTUS, we see you, Justice Katanji Brown Jackson. We might not know all the battles it took for you to get here, but we thank you for your fights and for your victories. Warriors win. So shout out. I am just so elated that we can um, acknowledge this in April, which is National Black History Month. And again, that I, I forgot to mention that that poem is from a young lady named by the name of Lovey. Follow her on social media. She's amazing. So I'm super excited to share that. So happy National Black History, Black Women History Month. We just left March, which was Women's History Month. So it's great to just go into this month with this great feat. And I'm excited about the future of our country. Now, nonetheless, let's get to it because we have a very special guest on with us tonight. I am super excited to have him. I'm going to bring him on the live, but we have with us. CFL football player with the Sasquatching team in Canada, Erica Calhoun's son, Erica Calhoun's son, I'm just <laughs> a native of Alabama. Uh, welcome to the show, number 42, Derek Moncrief. I got it right. Yes, man, you did. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you thank you so much for joining us i am super excited to have you um on with us tonight and um for just to give you a little preface this is my friend's son um but he's doing great work and i've heard all about his life i probably know more about him than he think i know because his mama love his baby love her baby <laughs> um, before we get into you, Derek, what do you what are your thoughts about the new Supreme Court justice? Oh man, this uh it's amazing. That's a uh this an iconic moment, you know, for the world, uh for black women, for black history. And uh, you know, it's just time, you know. Times are changing, people are getting into higher seats, uh, people are getting to those tables where you know um change can happen 
within the world system. And uh, I'm just excited for the process of everybody, what's going on in the States right now. Oh, yes. It's amazing, amazing work. And he says the States because you live in Canada, correct? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's always home. Alabama's always home to you, correct? Oh, yeah, for sure. And you're oh, repping the Pratt Bill shirt. Let us see it. Let's. <laughs> yeah, going the distance. This is my uh the Prattville edition right here. It's where I'm from, Prattville, Alabama. Uh, yes. Yeah, this is my favorite clothing line. So now, yeah. in preparation to have you on, I felt like I needed to do my due diligence because my friend would probably kill me if I did not interview <laughs> you well. So I am ready for tonight's show. But what I did, I Googled your name. I Googled Derek Moncrief, and there were decades of pictures of you playing um, yeah. the sport that you absolutely love, football. Yeah. yeah. Tell me what does football mean to you? Oh, man. It's a... Uh... Man, it's been an integral part of my life uh, ever since I was five, six years old. Uh, my dad, my dad, uh, he just raised us on football, me and my two older brothers. Uh, he trained us early, uh, long nights, early mornings, football practices, uh, just preparing us for these moments. And uh, I'm just blessed to be able to do it at a high level. And uh, it's just been a blessing to me. You know, I thank my parents for being there for me. Mm -hmm. So share with us your dad's name because I only mention your mom because <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh Derek Moncrief. So Derek Moncrief, okay. Yeah, so yeah, so you're yeah. like the second, third junior? I'm the second. I'm the second. Yeah, the let's second. just say that. You can call me a junior. You can call me a junior for sure. <laughs> I love it. So you yeah. talked about how your dad um, really instilled in you about football. Um, yeah. How invaluable do you think about those moments, like growing up with your dad and having those experiences? And what yeah. are some of the things he taught you uh, while he assisted you with achieving your goal? Yeah, uh, just having a dad, you know what I mean? Most people are not blessed to have a dad. Um, just to have that important figure in my life um, pushing me um, beyond football developing my skills, my character, my faith, and uh, him just helping me even in, uh, even if today. You know, I give him a phone call every now and then, and we'll just chop it up, and he's, he just helps me, guide me through life. And uh, just thank him for that, you know what I mean? I'm uh, 28 years old, going to be 29 in June, so uh, he's been a, big, a very big part of my life, for sure. Now, if um, we a lot of times we think about ourselves and we can see how people have inspired us, and I'm quite sure you've looked at your dad, but I want you to tell me how have you inspired your teammates? Like, if I were to go to your teammates now, anybody that you've played with, tell me yeah. what they say about Derek Munkry. Uh, a leader, um, leads by example, um, come in the building early, leave late, first guy in there. Uh, selfless, selfless teammate. I always put uh, the team, the team goals, and my teammates um, before myself. Um, and that's that's part of being successful. That's the part of being a leader. Um, you sacrifice uh, stuff for yourself for the betterment of the team. And um, I just thank God's respect that uh, my fire. But well, this is my fifth year in the CFL. Played one year in the NFL. So uh, it's definitely been a blessing. And, you know, I just try to lead by example and show guys the way. Now you talk about leadership in the way of making those sacrifices. What are some yeah. of the sacrifices that you feel like you've made to accomplish and achieve the goal that you have achieved? Uh, just my time, my time and my effort, because uh, to be the best, you have to put the time in. Um, I sacrifice a lot. You can sacrifice family time, uh, you know, things like that where, you know, I'm always looking ahead to be the best. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's just hard. It's hard. It's hard to do that. But um, the reward is great. And, uh, you know, I just try to balance myself out on that part. And um, But to be successful, it takes a lot of your time and dedication and commitment to your craft. Would you trade it? Like, would you trade now, yeah. knowing where you are now, would you trade and have that time back or – are you yeah. comfortable with the decisions you've made? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I want to be where I'm at. You know what I mean. Uh, you, you're born to to. Uh, we're born to defy the odds, um, to do great things on this earth while we can. Uh, we got a short time here, 
So we got to maximize the moments, the time that we have uh, to leave the world better than what it was before we came and, you know, be the best person we can be and uh, live out our gifts and give them to the world. Now, you said something truly amazing that just hit me. You born to defy the odds. Like that is like an amazing quote. I I, I think I'm gonna have to steal that one, Derek. <laughs> you can get it. You can get it. <laughs> yeah, I mean that the, when you think about it, we are born um, as we introduced with Katanji Brown. You know, and and what she's done, she's defied the odds. You know, and that's part of our journey is to overcome to uh, to to get through the things in our life. As a matter of fact, so um, yesterday was ironic that we're kind of leading to this way because yesterday I was just thinking to myself, you know, I was prophesying over myself. I was thinking about like, okay, Shay, you have a lot to achieve, right? And I kept thinking to myself, you know, I'm I'm going to, when somebody look at me or when somebody think about me, they're going to say, yes, I was flawed. Yes, I had these issues. and I. But what they will say is that I overcame them to become everything that God has called me to be. Do you feel like you're walking in that calling? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, It's beyond football for me. I can do football in my sleep. I train six days a week, da-da-da-da. But uh, I'm just blessed, man. I'm blessed. And and God, uh, he has his hand on my life. Um, Just just being myself and doing ministry outside of the the pulpit. And that's the real work for me, so... uh, Every day I try to do something and encourage somebody or use my gift that he gave me to give to the world. Wow. So you consider yourself just a gift and you just want to be used by God. Pretty much just a vessel. We all are vessels, though, you know. I, I'm i glad that you're taking me there. You're taking me there really fast, right? <laughs> because yeah. there's a couple things that I want to talk about. And we're going to get to all these different things because yeah. I know I've heard about um, – just the wonderful work that you're doing and all the things that you're doing and, and the role that you're playing in people's lives. But I want to talk about something. Um, I want to talk about in this direction and then we could lead off into what ministry is to you. Just okay. recently, I don't know if you heard, but there were some really um, comments that were made towards Russell uh, Wilson. Did you hear about those comments about him being lame? Oh yeah. And so it really, as I was thinking about it, praying over this interview, I wanted to talk to you about it because I, I, I have my own thoughts, but I want you to share because I really feel like you guys are similar in a lot of ways. You both are playing professional football. You both um, are committed to your family and you both are committed to God and you let the world know. Yeah. Um, I want to know what is your thoughts and perspective about that comment, and and, and yeah, just share your thoughts. <laughs> we can have a discussion about this. <laughs> Man, you know, you know how the world is. Uh, everybody, this generation is, is different. Uh, they don't want to see him as everybody want to be hard. Everybody want to portray this certain persona, like you got to be this to get a woman, or you got to be like this to get a man. Uh, but he's just being his true self. And if everybody would be like that, the world would be better. It would be better relationships, longer lasting marriages, and uh, so on and so forth. But you know how it go. People going to hate, and uh, everybody won't have something to talk about all the time. So it's entertainment. <laughs> it, it is entertainment. Did you kind of get offended? I mean, I, I know it wasn't about yeah. you, but yeah. did you think about it in, in relation to how you are and what you feel like a man should be? Mm, I didn't really get offended because, you know, when you're in that spot like like that, and, and I'm a professional athlete, so I know uh, everything that you do, you say, it's under a microscope. So you, you try to kind of be, you want to be private as you can, but you, you, all, you also want to, you know, show your love and affection towards the person that you you're in covenant with. So uh, I understand it, you know, but uh, just try to try not to get into all that. Yeah, I was, I was kind of frustrated. I'm going to tell you, ladies, I know yeah. that, you know, we always grow up and you hear about, you know, Shard want to have a thug and all these good things. I mean, I get it. I've I've heard the songs. I've been out in the clubs, the streets too. I used to be there. 
But um, I think it's really offensive when um, when we when we label men in that way because a lot of women want a good man, right? They say they want a good man. They say they want a man who loves God, who could be led by God. They say they want a man who's successful and whatever that success looked like, and that's committed to them. And when we have those men, we want to label them as lame. We want to hand clap and and root for the person that say they're lame. And you know, for me, I'm great grateful that we have men like that in the world because that's that's what we're striving for like i want to be the best woman i want a man to be the best man that doesn't mean he's lame that just means he's take care of his responsibilities right so so I just I just thought that was really crazy. And then, you know, with you coming from the South, I know your mama told you open doors and, <laughs> and all <Sure>. those things. <laughs> so, you know, they, she's probably told because I know Erica yeah. Young was like, you better open that door. I can just hear her oh, saying yeah. that now because she, she preached every word. <laughs> yeah, that's her. That's her. All day, every day. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you um, so being a professional athlete, you talked about yeah. um, by the way, if you're just tuning in, if you're just um, tuning in to the show, this is Hearts and Heels. We're on 90.7 FM WBAS, and we're on live on social media at Hearts and Heels. The number one, we have the Derek Moncrief in the house with us. He is um, a player with the CFL, he plays defense. So, we're going to talk about some football things, but we're talking about him as a person, his life, his experiences and what he's been through um i want to know uh what has been let, let's go back a little bit okay um describe to me your major highlights like what has been the highlight for your career and what has what have you felt um the most achieved in mm, my highlights for my career yeah even off the field uh yeah with me not qualifying to um, go to Division One schools, but I had letters in from Alabama, Nick Saban, you go on and on, and I had to go to junior college. Um, bad grades, I never liked school, never, never, you know, made D's and L's and all that type of stuff. And I got a college degree, I got an associate's degree, and then I, I went to uh, Auburn, then I went to Oklahoma State, and I got another degree. So those are like my top highlights because people didn't, you know, uh, say I wasn't going to make it. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and, and like, that's a major accomplishment in my life. You know what I mean? Um, and off the field, I mean, on the field, uh, of course, going to the uh, NFL. Um, first one in my family, probably like the second, third guy from my city for real. But, you know, um, that's a blessing there in itself, you know. It just mm -hmm. motivates everybody around me. Yeah, I love that. So you talk about school because you know we have a lot of kids that that yeah. are they want to they have those dreams, whatever they are, you know, to play professional fo football, play professional yeah. basketball. You talk about your degrees. Congratulations, by the way. Um, that's a really great story to share. Yeah. Um, that you went from you know having these and else to get having two degrees underneath your belt. So. Uh, thank you for sharing that. What would you tell the young man now who is struggling in school? Or it, it may not even be a struggle. It may just be that they're not committed to the school. How would you, if you were to do something different, what advice would you give to them? Oh, man, more definitely uh, stop being lazy at the point. Um, ask for help. Um, ask questions because if you don't ask questions, like you're going to always be in that same spot. And just don't be afraid, you know what I mean? Don't don't be afraid to, you know, make good grades and seem, you know what I mean, uh, try not to be cool and try not to fit in with everybody. Because at the end of the day, everybody got their own lives. Everybody going to move up or you're going to mm -hmm. move down. You're never going to stay in the same spot. So I just tell them that, you know, stay motivated and just stay beyond sports and everything. And you always want to make good grades in school. So, you know, you got a bright future ahead of yourself. Mm hmm. Yeah. Now we talked about the beginning. You said your dad took you outside and, and kept you outside 20 hours of the day. <laughs> and but 
how did it stick? Like, you know, a lot of times you hear kids or young people or people that grow up and say, okay, my daddy tried to get me in sports, but I hated him because of coaching or, you know, it just never stuck. What made football stick with you? Uh, just a discipline, just a discipline part of it. Um, and one wanted to be the best. Uh, it just created this certain confidence that I've carried to this day. A certain aura about myself, like if I'm putting the work in, then the results gonna show, and then you just keep going. It's just a process every day. Um, you know what I mean? So he showed us that at a young age, um, to be consistent and uh, just keep stacking the days. And once you keep stacking the days, the results gonna come, and you know, older you get, you'll start seeing their success once you reflect on it. Mm hmm. So yeah. you played, you had a good high school career in Prattville, correct? Yes. All right. Do you miss those days? Yeah, it's so crazy. Um, the other day uh, I was working out uh, Monday and I went to the field house and we was the last ones to win the state championship in 2011. Oh, uh, that's been what, 11, 20, what, 11 years, 10 years, mm -hmm. what, what not. So uh, we was the last ones to win it. We won it at uh, Brian Denny Stadium. Um, so Roll those tide. are just, Roll tide. <laughs> that was a historical moment. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad to, you know, I'm proud to represent the city like that. Wow. Wow. That's a full moment. Well, you know, I, I love the University of Alabama uh, <laughs> in Nick Saban land. <laughs> now, so the scripture talks about much tribulations. And, and I say this because we all deal with trials and tribulations. We all have these things that we overcome our past and, you know, some problems. What I know yeah. you talked about school, overcoming that with school. What are yeah. some other things that you had to overcome that really impacted you throughout your life? Oh, uh, man, just just the faith part, you know, just the faith part. Uh, you can just the mental part. Um, uh, depression, everything, you know, just just coming up because, you know, coming up, we we were never uh, taught about mental uh, awareness and mental health and dealing with stuff, uh, you know what I mean? Relationships, whatever it is in your life, financial troubles. Um, so I can say those, those big things. And once I got a hold of that and once I, you know, let, let God, God just navigate my life, it become, it became easier um, mm -hmm. because I know I can trust him through the process. So, so was it important. faith in you or faith that things will work out? Faith with things will work out. You know what I mean? Um, I just, I'm a big person on vision. Mm -hmm. I visualize stuff. Um, I write my, I write my goals and my visions down and, you know, uh, just being patient. Because once you, you're patient, you, you develop that, uh, but you got to develop that with your faith because if you don't have faith, you can't be patient. It, it can't. It ain't gonna work. You gotta have faith. You gotta be able to trust God through the process, however long it takes. Whatever He says, you know what I mean. Everything takes time, and you know, just keep the faith in Him, and everything will be all right. You just preached the whole sermon because I tell you, that's that patience is hard. Tough. It's tough. Trust me. <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> it's it's tough. It's tough. Just you know what I mean. Uh. Cause you got to go through it yourself. You got to go through those, those fiery paths. You got to go into the wilderness where you you by yourself. Uh, mom and dad can't help you. Grandma and them they can't help you. They can pray for you, but you got to go through it yourself. You got to be able to go through those those phases and that that process of life. Um, so you and God can have a, a real connection, and you you can be able to help somebody else once you come out. So that means that you had to have a foundation of God, right? For sure. For sure. So how did you pull? Because you talk about depression. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people go through depression <clears throat> and they don't realize it, you know, especially um young black men. I don't think yeah. a lot of people they they recognize, you know, depression mm -hmm. as black men because again, yeah. like you said, we don't talk about it. But how you know. How did you pull yourself from that moment, or what was it that that clicked and said, "Okay, no, I need to trust God." God Himself, <laughs> because 
once you get to those, uh, once you get to that, your quiet place where mm-hmm. you can be able to to quiet your mind, quiet the voices around you, and even quiet your voice. Um, and once you be able to listen to him and meditate on on his word, and, and, and you know just take that time with him, he'll begin to tell you things, and you can begin to just listen and take those steps, and it gives you peace. It gives you peace that uh, you know that 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 word can't give you, that wine can't give, you, the alcohol, the drugs can't give you. And you'll you'll never be the same. Yeah, I have a 22 year old and I was just talking to him the other day and he talked about these ups and downs. You know, it's so interesting. He's like, you know, I have these ups and downs and and when he's up, I can tell because he's very positive. You know, he's talking to me, he's calling. But when he's down, I can tell because he's, you know, away. And I keep trying to tell him it's okay to have those down moments. Um, if you were to tell men, young men now that's that's dealing with those ups and downs, what what is it that you could you you would tell them as they're going through those seasons? Man, even on your even on your your worst day, uh, just try to keep a faith. Just try to keep the faith. Just a little bit of faith. Just just see the light in everything, even when it's dark and is is no ending or. You don't know which way to go. Uh, just take it one day at a time. Um, have faith in God. Have faith in yourself. Even if you don't know God, just call out to him. Um, develop a prayer life, even if you don't know how to pray. Um, seek some wise counsel. Have people that's upbeat. Have people that that are for you. And uh, protect your energy. That's the biggest thing I tell them. Mm. Yeah. What does faith look like to you? What does it look like? I never had that question. But <laughs> <laughs> faith look uh what it looks like to me is uh just a a very strong or very strong sense of believing. Um uh, believing and having hope uh, in the unknowns of life um whatever is next and whatever's further ahead you don't worry about that you just worry about the moment and just being standing in the uh standing in the now being positive uh of the current circumstances no matter what it is you know that's how i define it have you ever been mad with god before and how did you deal with that Ooh. oh yeah i've been mad before <laughs> I've been mad. I can tell uh 2018 um I had a playoff game. I think it was I think it was a game before the championship or something, and I hurt my shoulder. And I was crushed. I probably hurt my shoulder in like the first quarter. I tore it and all that type of stuff. And I was mad because a couple months earlier, uh I heard it prior. And I was like, what's going on? But I came back and I said, I'm going to be good. When I got hurt, I was like, I was out of there. I was mad because I had NFL dreams and how is this going to happen? And like, I didn't understand it at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, my aunt, my great aunt sent me a a text message. It was on Ecclesiastes. Um, It's a time for everything under the sun. And when I read that verse, it took me, it took me a couple of weeks to understand it. I just kept reading it, kept reading it, kept reading it, kept reading it. And I understood it and gave me peace and I started praying to God a little bit more. You stop being mad and start praying. For sure. <laughs> I know because you know God sometimes if he, he doesn't do it the way you want him to, want him, want him to, like it's like yeah. you can you can see it in front of you. I can only imagine what you felt like. I can see this, this is happening for me, and then all of a sudden now we're no longer here. Why in the world, God, did you do this to me? <laughs> that was Chris for sure. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Now listen, if you're just tuning in, you are listening to Hearts and Heels on 90.7. I'm your host, Shay Robinson. We have Derek Moncrief um on with us. He's a native of Prattville, Alabama. 
uh, where he attended Prattville High School and helped him win the championship in 2011. Yeah, I get yeah. it right. Okay, see, yeah. I'm listening. listening. <laughs> he is currently a CFL player um, in Canada. He's number uh, 42. So make sure you go get your 42 jerseys. Um, he has his green jersey on. All the pictures. Make sure you take a look at him. We're going to talk about his website in a, in a minute, uh, so you can learn more about him and the work that he's doing. If you've been listening, you have heard about a young man who is uh, talking about God and talking about his experiences and talking about some challenges that he overcame. Now, as we talk about challenges, you made it to the NFL. Yeah. You found you found your dreams with the Rams, correct? Yeah. So how was that experience for you and how do you feel not being there anymore? Oh, man, I can tell you. It was a great experience. Um, first, I signed with the Raiders and they mm-hmm. released me and uh, – you know, I was out of a job for a minute because it was uh, it was it was in the middle of the pandemic, so that happened, and I had a couple trials and stuff like that. And when I got to LA, I, I did great at the trial. They loved me and signed the contract. The experiences was crazy. I'm playing with the best players in the world, um, but it wasn't for me. Hmm. So, <laughs> so God can. You can you can say your plans and you can write them down, and God's like, nah, I can take you there, I can show you, but this is not for you. This is not the place where you need to be. This ain't the place I got for you. So He allowed me to experience that, and it was great. It was great, but I, I knew I knew at a point of time that I ain't belong there. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm just you know amazed that you know because sometimes you fight for so long and you always yeah. thinking that if you make it here because a lot of no. times I tell people to stop wishing their days away like we right. you know we wake up Monday morning oh I can't wait till Friday yeah. you know yeah. so you yeah. miss the opportunity for, see, for Tuesday Wednesday Thursday to yeah. offer you some and great because you're wishing for that Friday and we right. live our lives I can't wait till I'm 13 I can't wait till I'm 16 I can't wait till I'm yeah. 18 I can't wait till I'm 21 can't yeah. wait till I get out of mama's house and yeah. every time we get to those points it doesn't mm-hmm. live up to the expectations we have is that yeah. what happened uh I can say that you know uh I just it was just something it was just something like he had more for me, more than uh, whatever the millions and the stuff of the the public's perception, right? Everybody think the NFL, a bunch of money, da 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 da, this, but that's a whole nother different lifestyle. That's a lifestyle that probably ninety percent of the people couldn't handle. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a lot that comes with it. You got time, you got stuff off the field, people pulling at you, this and that. Um, I can go on and on about that, but uh, yeah, I can just say it was a blessing in disguise, not for me, uh, for me not to be in the NFL. Wow, that's like really super mature. Like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really super proud of you because most people be like, oh no, 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 I want to be there. Uh, yeah. But I did notice in your interview when you were signed um, back to your current team. Am I saying the right, Sasquatchin? No, nah, it's Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan, because I would tear up the word of so glad you Saskatchewan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <have> to <laughs> it's a hard word to say, though. It's a hard yes. word. Yes. Okay. So, Saskatchewan, I yeah. saw your um mm-hmm. your your interview after you signed, right? And yeah, so, yeah. one of the things I found really interesting is that you talked about um in that interview, they said, okay, you left us, right? And you yeah. went to another team, and now you, you've come back. And are you looking yeah. at the NFL again? And yeah. you said, no, this is home for me. Yeah. What brought you to that decision in that point? Because that, to me, was a really mm-hmm. bold statement. And you yeah. said it with a smile, and you yeah. said it very confidently. Man, uh, you just know. Uh, I can say this. my I had a playoff game. And 2019, and that was my last game there. We lost. And 
I was on the sideline looking at the crowd and it was just something about the energy in that moment, which I thought I was not coming back, but I reflected on it. And this was, this was, that was the place where I, I was supposed to be. Um, mm -hmm. God allowed me to sign the NFL contracts and go there, but he allowed me to come back and it's beyond the field. Like I got relationships with people, uh, fans, people in the community, um, I do community work and it's just, it's just home. It feels like Prattville up north, basically. <laughs> I know. I heard you when you said that. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. he found his own personal Pratt Prattville in um, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So what's yeah. the lessons learned that you, if you had to share with the young man who's saying, okay, look, I want to mm -hmm. go to the NFL. Or I want to play professional ball. What What are the lessons? If you could give them advice, mm -hmm. like two or three things, what, what are the lessons learned? Uh, first of all, always be professional when it comes down to everything. Um, professionalism, it matters in every in everything that you do, um, from the time you walk in the building, people are always watching. Um, second, always have a, a, a business hat on. Um, you're a businessman. You're just not a football player. Um, once you understand that, once you understand the business aspect, because everything's always changing, you got to be able to uh, adjust. You got to be able to adapt to your surroundings and you got to get better every year. And um, thirdly, uh, just have a work ethic um, mm -hmm. when nobody's watching. And then it's going to always show when everybody's watching because you're always prepared. So them are the three things I tell them. You talked about NFL, being a football player, being a businessman, and doing those things. A lot of people over the years, since the mm -hmm. Colin Kaepernick um, event happened a couple years ago, there's been so many different talks because we know LeBron James did some speaking yeah. out. So we had different athletes speaking out about different things. And yeah. one of the, one of the um, resonating um, voices against NFL players or any professional athlete speaking out was that you're an athlete, just stay in the athlete's place. What's your thoughts about that? Nah, you can't do that because we're put in that position. We're put in position to uh, to speak on things if we do our homework, if we're aware, if we're aware in our mind and, and we know what to say, not just saying it because that's the, that's the trend of topic. Mm -hmm. and, and we got that responsibility to do that because we're more than oh we're more than uh what we play we're actually people in this world so we got to be able to voice our opinions and we got to be able to uh be a positive beacon of light into the communities and to the people in the world because they look up to us so as long as we ain't saying that's stupid or out the way mm -hmm. uh i think it's always a good approach to to say things and speak on things like that do you think that being a professional athlete automatically puts you into a place where people are looking up to you? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, so, so why do a lot of people shy away from it? I mean, it's just because of your personality. Some guys don't like that. Um, some guys, they can't speak on things or that's just not their person. That's just not their persona. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, personalities. But a person like me, I say something. You just gotta know when to say it and how, cause you can't say you can't you can't talk too much. And then people uh, you get that perception of oh you just run your mouth. Mm -hmm. Not that I care what anybody says, but you, you gotta be you gotta be wise on how you speak and how you say things. Yeah, the Bible says wise as a serpent, humble as a dove. Right. That's right. What do you think the greatest challenge is um, for athletes today? Uh. The biggest challenge, man, uh, just uh, the biggest <laughs> challenge, staying out of trouble. Ooh, that's a good one. And I got to add to, and the biggest challenge is um, surrounding yourself with the right people. Even if, you know what I mean, you, you've known them for 10, 20 years, you grew up with them and stuff like that. Maybe, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the seasons, sometimes they end. 
You know what I mean? And you got to be able to uh, uh, have wise discernment on who to have around you because it can either can rise you up or take you down. Trust me, I've been there. So. I'm gonna have to snap on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Hey, your circle makes a difference. Yeah, it does. It does. I can tell. I can tell them from experience. I know. You know. Well, you you know. you said it like you knew it too. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. No. Um. So it's the scripture, and and I always tell people when you think about friends and, and people because I've had my challenges of having different people around me and one of the things I, I'm looking at now first of all I'm always like you know somebody has to choose to be with me like I, yeah. I gotta choose them they have to choose me because it's a relationship it's a fight together mm -hmm. but also when I'm at my lowest point you yeah. know who's gonna take me to the right places when you right. think about the man who was on the bed and and um he needed to be healed and the mm -hmm. house the church was packed out yeah. and you know his friends was like we're gonna get you healed man come on yeah. come on don't yeah. worry about it. we're gonna climb this rooftop and get you to jesus <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. Telling you, I'm gonna do a hood bible i'm telling you but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know he's like nah yeah. man don't worry we got you we got you homie come on come on and, yeah. and they got him to where yeah. he needed to be in order to be his best so, but sometimes we don't do that yeah that's real why is that hard why is it hard for us to let go i mean because see you've had that experience so what was hardest about letting go i mean, I mean it's just uh it's like the connection um just time spent with people and yeah you know it, it's i can't describe it because it's the energy that's why you gotta be um, protective of your energy because once you connected to a person like that and Ooh. your friendships and stuff like that, it, it's hard to uh, untangle that energy. So it takes a while, and then you have to pray it off sometimes because yeah, yeah. keep coming back, or you'll be, you know what I mean, trying to reach out to them and vice versa. And, and it's hard. It's hard. It's a it's a tough transition. But once you let go, you you can reflect on how. Uh, people were, you know, hindering your your process and your progress. Mm -hmm. And then you can see God taking you to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of next level, going <clears throat> the distance. Yeah. I'm super excited about this part. Now, before we go there, let me say, if you're just tuning in, we got D. Derek Moncrief that's hanging out with us here on Hearts and Hills in 90.7. Um, so he told me the name of the team because I've been mispronouncing it the whole time, but I'm not going to try it again. But he is a CFL football player, number 42, and it's Saskatchewan, right? Saskatchewan, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. Almost he did. Almost had it. Almost had it. He's a native yeah. of Prattville, Alabama. And we've been just talking about his life, getting his perspective on some of the things that he's overcome and the challenges um, that he's overcome and just dropping some knowledge. He's dropped some real knowledge. So make sure you go back and listen. Now we're going to talk about his ministry and we're going to talk about the man and the ministry that God has placed inside of him. And it's called going the distance. First of all, tell them how, tell the audience how they can connect with you. Like if they want to link with you, if they want to get in touch with you, how can yeah. they get in contact with you? Um, Facebook, Going the Distance, mm -hmm. uh, Going the Distance brand. Um, Instagram, it's the same, Going the Distance brand. Or D. Moncrief 21 on um, Instagram. Mm -hmm. I got Twitter, um, Facebook, of course. Derek Moncrief and you know just give me a shout out email whatever uh, I website, do whatever website website yeah. the website um <laughs> derekmoncrief.com and I got everything on there from uh, the ministry to the foundation and uh just the whole bio on, of uh how it started and everything like that so well tell yeah. us a little bit about going the distance yeah so going the distance man it's uh it's just inspirational um for me growing up in this small city where i come from and uh just having big dreams and um just knowing i can take on the world and uh just i just want to inspire somebody to 
not even just to play sports where you want to be a lawyer, a doctor, um, pediatric doc, doctor, or whatnot. Um, you can do whatever you want to. You just have to uh, set your goals high. Um, just keep going the distance to the mountaintop. And uh, it might take a little while, but, you know, uh, just take it one day at a time and keep God first. One of the quotes that you have on your website, which, well, I cannot read this quote. I want to read this paragraph because I thought it was really great. On the going distance website, he says, when I was young, my dad would make me run on the dirt road by my grandma's house. Um, I remember picking up speed and becoming fully aware of my legs and feet. God was filling me with purpose and destiny in that moment. Please talk about that some more. Wow. Shout out to my fiance because she helped me with the with the writing and everything right there. Um, What's her name? Cassia. Cassia. Hi, Cassia. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Cass on that. But, yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations but, um, on the fiance, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, you said said it again. Ask me that question again. I'm God sorry. was filling me with purpose and destiny in yeah. that moment that you became fully aware of my legs in my feet i mean i just want you to expound a little bit more yeah. on the thoughts behind that and you know what you're feeling and what does that mean yeah. when it comes to going the distance well what that means is um you're just fully aware uh you're fully aware of um, that moment that you're in and that moment uh where, where you're going mm-hmm. uh, my dad gave me this quote all the time he says uh you got a long way to go but a short time to get there um and saying that is life is short so you got to maximize the moments you got to foresee those moments and you got to take the necessary steps no matter the distractions the setbacks you just got to keep going a distance um and just like thinking about a mountaintop you can't climb the mountaintop in one day it, it takes it might take a million steps you might slip fall Hurt your knee on some rocks. Uh, you just got to keep going. Just got to keep going, keep climbing. And eventually, you'll be at the top. You know what I mean? And, and stay humble on your walk. And that's what it's all about. Wow. I mean, you have so much wisdom. You're only like 28. Like you preach like 15 <laughs> sermons. <laughs> and this one message. Now I see where your mom get it from. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, man. No, 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 no. I love that. Um, yeah. Because it is a tough road. Like life is so many, it has so many challenges, so many curves. And yeah. and, and sometimes it's hard. You feel like you've been knocked down to a place where yeah. you can't get up anymore. Yeah. And I felt that. I know what that yeah. feels like. But when you, when yeah. you go in the distance, you know the knockdown is part of the journey. Yeah, for sure. And you, and you just don't get stuck there. You say, hey, you know, pick yourself up. Yeah, I dust, I dust yourself off, you know, and get back to work. Yeah, because, like, you got to encourage yourself on your journey because, like, you have those days where you can't call nobody and they might be going through their own life problems. You know what I mean? And some of the closest of friends, and it's just you and God and your effort and your determination and your faith. And that's going to that's gonna take you through. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because the scripture says faith without works is dead. So you didn't yeah. just say God and faith. You said your effort. I, I yeah. heard you. Yeah. You got <laughs> I ahead. heard you. That was <laughs> that was pivotal. You can have faith, but you got to put right. that work in too. Yeah. Um, that's important because you talk about working out six days a week. The six level days. of commitment that requires is, a, is beyond me. Man, I don't even know how I do it sometimes. <laughs> even on vacation, like six days. A week? Yeah, yeah. Most of the time, I am. I just took a couple of days because I'm with my family. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to enjoy it. I'm trying not to get caught up in the work. So I took a couple of days off until I get back. So, so tell me what do what do you do with your um your ministry? I call it ministry, but I know it's an organization. <laughs> what do you do? What are some of the things that you want to do? And um, how can people support your efforts? Uh, well, we just want to give back. Um, my fiance, we we do it together, and we just want to we want to give back um to to the youth. 
um, whatever it is in the communities, whether they need uh, stuff for school, um, even helping the elderly too, because you have to help the orphan, the, uh, the kids and the elderly. Mm-hmm. I believe highly in that, and just try to give back, um, try to help as much as we can, whatever, and uh, do stuff overseas too, because she's done it, uh, evangel- evangelistic work there. Um, she's been to Ethiopia and stuff like that. So uh, wow. we look, yeah, so we look to do that and, uh, you know, just try to give back as much as we can because, uh, I mean, that's what it's all about. Now, if you are excited about going the distance and you want to uh, be a part of uh, this movement that he has, make sure you go to his website, DerekMoncrief.com, and that's D-E-R-R-I-C-K-M-O-N-C-R-I-E-F.com. Now, on that website, you can find all the products for going the distance. He has hats, um, jumpsuits, uh, snapbacks, shirts, uh, workout clothes, all kinds of things. Now, in those, so when we when we purchase that, we're supporting your ministry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we don't we don't get back. That's what we believe in. Uh, mm-hmm. Just the, the the clothes and stuff. That's just a bonus. Um, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We trying to, we trying to push the limits in the world. We trying to give back and, you know what I mean? Give somebody some hope. You know what I mean? Because the world is, is hopeless in some cities. Um, not even, you know, just Alabama. It's, you know, you got places all up north and stuff like this. So whoever hits me up and, and we pray about it and see, we can we try to help them out. Oh, he said we pray about and we see. I tell you what. <laughs> Thank you so much, Derek. You've been amazing tonight. You've uh, shared a lot of great information. Now, we coming down to the final. I know it doesn't seem like we've been on for an hour, but we only have about nine more minutes to go. So I do have a couple more things, and then I want you to give your final words. Um, so best advice that you've ever gotten from a coach? Whew. Best advice. Man, you want to go to the next level? Got to work harder. Wow. You got to work harder. You either get up better or you're getting worse. Ain't no in between. Wow. Yeah. All right. So best is best advice you've gotten from your dad. <laughs> wow. Pray about it. Hmm. All right, all right. So you know I have to go to your mom. Best advice <laughs> you got from your mom. Ooh, trust God. Oh, you no, know, you gotta say it like she said it. <laughs> trust God, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you did the look at everything. <laughs> you know how the eyes go. You know how the eyes go. That's yes, up. All day. Yeah. I, I love it. Um yeah. So most yeah. most impactful experience yeah. thus far. Ooh. Most impactful experience. Oh man. Um when I'm in Canada, I did something. What did I do with some kids? Just hanging out with the kids and uh doing like a little camp or or whatnot um that's just impactful to me because like they look up to you it's not many days they get to meet like uh, football players and stuff over there mm-hmm. and like where i'm at they football crazy so like when they see us they be like it's it's nuts you know what i mean mm-hmm. so i get to spend time with them and recently uh was it was it march i uh I went to the uh, the elderly home and I spent some time with them, mm-hmm. and that was that was amazing to me. I had a good time, great time, great time. What do you want the world to remember about Derek Moncrief? Man, I poured everything out. I, I emptied it. I emptied. I emptied a tank. Servant, selfless, and that's it. I don't care nothing about football. That don't matter. They come and go. Great football players. 
way before me, 819, 100s, and all that type stuff. That's all I want to be. I'm just a great servant and pure. Wow, pure. Yeah. What is God saying about Dear Moncrief right now? More work to do. It's always more. Push it. It's like pushing the envelope. It's always more. It's always more that I can do. It's all more. I can always be more obedient. I can always have more faith. It's always more. It ain't. You can't get complacent. This is, I treat it like football. You can't get complacent in your walk. You can't get complacent in life because somebody depending on you. Somebody needs something from me, so I got to give it. And that's what it's all about. Well, you have definitely given it tonight, Derek Moncrief. Remember, you can go and support him at www.derekmoncrief.com. That is D-E-R-R-I-C-K-M-O-N-C-R-I-E-F.com. Follow him on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I'm going the distance, support, purchase, buy something. Um, I got the website up now, so I got to go out here and buy something now myself. Derek, we're at the end of the show, and I always ask the guests to give their final thoughts. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to talk, to think about um, yeah. what thoughts you want to share, whether it's to inspire someone or to encourage someone or just whatever it is that you want to say. Um, again, I do want to thank you for coming on. Make sure you stay tuned. He, if Derek Moncrief, he is a professional football player with the CFL. Um, his team is? The Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Thank you, because I was going to mess it up again in Canada. He's yeah. a native of Prattville, Alabama. As he gets ready to share his word, I do want to say that you guys be encouraged. Um, I think Derek Moncrief has done an amazing job at talking about all the different things about um, really just going the distance, what his ministry is about, being able to overcome and challenge. We have seen that today. We have our first Black female Supreme Court justice. Indeed, I can only imagine what her run, what her journey has been like. So I'm going to say, don't worry about how the wind is blowing in your life. Just hold on, stay steadfast, keep your faith, keep looking in one direction because the wind cannot take you off any path that you're on. Stay on your path. Derek. Well, yeah, for all the listeners and everybody, uh, Thank you for having me on the show. Uh, it's definitely a blessing always, you know, to use the platform and glorify God. And uh, I just want to tell the people, uh, you can go the distance, whatever you do, um, start the day. You can you can have a fresh start. Um, ask God to, to lead you all the way through yeah, the, the peaks and the valleys and the journeys of life. And uh, just take it one day at a time, one step at a time. Um, be in the moment, be, be, just be present and uh, just always stay positive, you know, keep the faith. Much love. Much love. Thank you, dear Moncrief, for hanging Thank out you. with us uh, tonight. Uh, go on the distance, support the ministry, support the man, support the vision. I don't know about you, but I've been inspired tonight. So thank you, Derek, for you put light in the fire over here. <laughs> and remember that, remember that I need to keep the faith. Remember that you can always hang out with us every Thursday, 6 p.m. right here on WBAS 90.7. This is Hearts and Hearts and Heels with Shay Robinson. And you guys know what I say every single week. Whatever you do, do it with all your heart. And if you can't put your heart in it, put your heels on and just walk away. We love you guys and we'll see you next week. <laughs>